If you are a resident of Abuja, you'd already be familiar with this building, this day dome, before now known for recreation and entertainment in the FCT, but has now been converted into a COVID-19 isolation and treatment center to further help in the fight against coronavirus in Nigeria. So come with me as I take you on a tour of the newly redesigned and remodeled facility for COVID-19 treatment and isolation in Abuja. Good health and well-being is one of the cardinal objectives of the Sustainable Development Goals, as captured in Goal 3. But the quest to achieve this has been largely threatened by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Amidst the growing trend in the cases around the world, and particularly in Nigeria, it has become imperative to ease the burden on the country's already overwhelmed healthcare system through innovative creation of isolation and treatment centers, providing prompt and needed treatments for COVID-19 patients in Nigeria. Achieving this, however, requires stakeholders' involvement and strategic collaborations by those who share in the vision of providing relief for the people as encapsulated in Goal 17 of the SDGs, which probably is the most cohesive SDG and emphasizes partnership for the goals. Leveraging on this principle of collaborations, phenomenal steps are being taken by some private sector players to score big in the fight against the novel virus. One of such astounding outcomes is the world-class 300-bed treatment and recovery center for COVID-19 patients in Abuja, recently donated to the federal government by a group of committed private sector organizations to the fight against COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. The group is spearheaded by one of the members of the private sector advisory group on sustainable development goals, the Sahara Group, in partnership with its main partner, These Day Media and Technology Group, owners of These Day Newspaper and Arise TV. The collaboration also includes the Coalition Against COVID-19, CACOVID, China Civil Engineering Construction Company, CCECC, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Central Bank of Nigeria, Africa Finance Corporation, Phase 3 Telecom, The Wood Factory, Ebewele Brown Bespoke, Siari Clothier, among others. In particular, the concept and design of the center was handled by CCECC within three days, while the entire facility was remodeled and completed in just six weeks. The world-class COVID-19 testing, tracing, and treatment center, Parade Sahara Foundation wards and ICU center, complete with ventilators, x-ray and dialysis. The Dees Day 54 gene testing mobile lab complete with reagents, with a scalable 200 to 1,000 tests per day. This day rapid tracing app for COVID-19 contact tracing and 98 room hotel and conference center next door for medical staff for six months. At the entrance of the center is a 54 gene mobile laboratory for instant testing of suspected cases of coronavirus. A patient entrance where patients are first received. The entrance has two regulated controlled doors to prevent anyone from randomly gaining access to or exiting the facility. A lounge and recreation space considered important to the treatment and recovery of patients, especially as it relates to their psychological state, mental health, and desire to get well. 
and different bed sections to suit the diverse needs of patients admitted into the facility. The facility, this day dome, used to be a popular event center in Abuja, but has now been converted into a COVID-19 isolation center in order to help trace, test, and treat coronavirus patients in the capital city. According to the medical advisor and coordinator of the facility, Dr. Peter Madu, who conducted our team around the facility, recreating the facility was birthed out of the need for Nigeria to stay prepared and ready to cater for a large number of coronavirus patients if hit hard by the pandemic, like in China, Italy, and the US. There is plenty of built in flexibility. Um, we have another set of beds here, another set of beds, our patient mobility, and then all our equipment room, we have all kinds of equipment. The dispensary, all our drugs and things will be here. Uh, again, beds with so much built in facilities. This is uh, the digitizer for our mobile x-ray machine the digitizer. The mobile x-ray takes the pictures from the ICU and then you just get a digital copy of the x-ray from here. That's um, our equipment room, our dispensing room, all our toilets to help with patient facility. Patients that don't require another level of care, they also have beds that are commensurate with what they need. This is our treatment room. Uh, where people who require private treatment are going to receive private treatment. Patients who then require treatment, we get the treatment from all the facilities you can see. Okay? They will get their drugs, they will get whatever treatment they require. But those, what happens in COVID is that um, it's a respiratory problem. So some get to the point of requiring respiratory support, respiratory and cardiovascular support. And when that happens in the extreme, that is when they need assistance. They need oxygen. They need ventilator. They need all kinds of monitoring. And that is why we have the ICUs in this place. So welcome to the ICU, intensive care uh, center of the COVID-19 uh, treatment center. For extreme cases, uh, we had, these are beds complete with monitors, um, four or five parameter monitors. We have them, infusion pumps, syringe pumps, and so on. Complete with uh, piped oxygen and medical air to each of the ICU beds. Of course, our cylinder, our oxygen cylinders are all there. We have plenty of them to provide oxygen. But what's unique about our ICU it's in addition to all the things that uh, you will see in other ICUs. Each of the rooms has a dialysis machine. So that in the event that any of the COVID people receiving treatment here goes into a situation of massive kidney compromise, we are not running all over the place to find a dialysis machine. Because if you have conditions like COVID, you have HIV, you have hepatitis, Many times you may not, if you need a dialysis machine, you may not find one easily or readily because people may not be willing to use their machine to share their machines with people who have some of those pre-existing conditions. So this center was thinking about all the pre-existing conditions a COVID patient may have and see how best we can also help them. That is why we have all those monitors, standard ICU, but in addition, having uh, the dialysis machine. But also knowing that these ones are here, other treatment centers around here, if they have a COVID patient that needs dialysis, of course, they can exchange. They can take, take their patients and come and do uh, dialysis. So you could bring other patients here. Well, you see, once you are inside care, the unit, the people, the team that is going to is looking after COVID patient in the whole of FCT. It's under a central command, okay. so it's a central command for looking after all the COVID patients. 
So they know who is where, they know who requires what. So if they can, a lot of internal arrangements is really very possible in making that all those things happen. It's important to know that all COVID patients in FCT are being treated under a central command. So the FCT medical team of the FCT knows where every COVID patient within the FCT is, be it National Hospital, whether it's Gogolada, whether it's Asokoro, whether it's Idu, whether it's here, whether it's Karu, any of the other centers, they are fully in the picture because we too we are, we are included, we have been integrated into that system, so we know what's available and where. So this is some of the things this facility is bringing into that pool. For all of the security because we have cases of people, patients living in isolation mode, escaping from isolation mode, what was it like? What is it? Are there any security to the to each other? We are looking at all the detailed operations of this place. Uh, we are using technology, access control technology, and so on. But beyond that, a lot of training is going on for the medical staff who are going to work here. Because they too will take every patient to a level of understanding of why they are here. And once you get to that level of understanding, all those kind of absconding is not likely to happen. It's when you have gaps in the knowledge and perceptions of the patient, and you have, when you have gaps, either in care or in the perception or understanding of the patient, you begin to have incidents like people absconding. But when the patient knows he's absconding at his own detriment, unless he's suicidal, it will happen. But if, even if he's suicidal, it's a medical situation that requires attention. We have six ICU beds. Uh, two of the rooms have two beds each. The middle two have one one bed. So, yes, we show you an area view of where the place. So, this place, the the this uh, this medical part of it. This is the medical part of it. All the facilities you have behind here is all the built-in facility to stop medical staff being infected. So the air conditioning system for all that system is different from the air conditioning system in this place. Everything behind that wall is not sharing the same air with this place. It has its own separate ventilation system because it's supposed to be clean area for people who work here, providing them facilities to change, facilities to clean, facilities to disinfect, before they go out and providing facilities for them to change into the correct PPE, dress properly before coming here. So we ha yeah. And of course, these uh, are TV monitors for the health team. From here, the, with the CCTVs, we know what is going on throughout the center. We have the CCTV monitors for all the people who uh, in this place, you'll be watching what the medical staff who work here can see what is going on in the IC rooms and generally within the facility. Let me just show you the, uh, for medical people who work here, of course, this is, uh, the entrance and the exit are completely separate. Where you're coming through, it's not where you're coming. Uh, where you're coming through, you cannot exit. So this is just exit only. To go out, of course, they must come in, change, change, disinfect. After disinfecting fully, after disinfecting, you must have a shower. You must wash your hands, have a shower, and uh, clean out completely. All these are no return doors. Because once you have re removed your PPE, you can't go back until the person comes in, comes out, and is clean again, you can go out. In the same way, so for the persons coming in, entrance only, okay? You come in, you change to, you change to scrubs, and then when you get in here, you change completely into your PPE is completely covered. 
eh? and then you are fully dressed down completely in the PPE, you have a small buffer place where you can decide, I can still go back into the PPE room, into here. But once you enter here, once you go past that door, it's no return. To go out, you must follow the other procedure. You can't go back through that place. So it's an out and in system that is completely monitored both electronically and with human beings so that staff don't get infected. And all this effort has been put in there because it is so critical. This whole investment on this side that you can see has been there just to ensure that people who work here do not get in harm's way by reason of being infected and they must be properly protected. So let me show you quickly the area view. Other centers are full and this station is to be activated. The MFCTA will just say, like I said, they already sent us a list of medical staff who work here. They will start receiving training. All the small, small things will be put in place for them. And of course, we have all the wash facilities and toilets completely customized for the patients. And then, again, on this side are patients who don't require anything. Patients who require very little care. They have all their facilities. Up here, what we have really is, uh, like we said, is stretching the capacity of this place. If you need these beds, they are available. If you don't need it, you don't have to use them. So they are there, beds for people who just need to be removed from society so that they don't infect people. They are available, they don't have to be used. When we started, um, we thought we could take 200, but like we said, we, rem we remain very flexible. You can stretch it now to 300. We've tried an arrangement and actually put in 300 if you need. There is still space. If the push really comes to the shore, we can even take more patients into this place. But like I said, it's complete with its own power, uh, a 500 kVA standby power. The Abuja Electricity Company brought in power here at, you know, in record time. The sewage system is completely independent of the public. We have a dedicated borehole sunk in on site. And so many of those facilities have been put together. But like you can see, many things have come in to put it all together. For the people of Nigeria, in support of the government of Nigeria by the private sector. Private sector, even inside the coalition, they've been supported by agencies like the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC the Central Bank of Nigeria. They have been also wonderful working through these groups to deliver this for the government and people of Nigeria. In addition to what we've also said, working on this COVID-19 has also shown and brought out some of the very best Nigerians we have. We've um, had some wonderful a team of Nigerians very young, brilliant, innovative, hardworking Nigerians who worked relentlessly to make this possible. Particularly again from Sahara Group. And I must again commend the selection process they must have in that organization to deliver the quality of human beings we've seen in that place. The likes of uh, Anirkam, the likes of Frank, the engineer, the likes of Aliu Buba, 
and the likes of um, uh, engineer Samson Kato. We, they work relentlessly, never say no, very innovative. For every problem, they think there's a solution, and they just think solution. They are so proactive and so dedicated. All through the lockdown period where we delivered, uh, where mo when most of the work here was done, they worked so innovatively. They worked so dedicatedly. They worked so committedly. But we must also compliment the executive management of Sahara, powered by their CEO. The CEO of Sahara Energy, Tokpe Shonubi, was here carrying beds on his head with the laborers to deliver what you can see. He didn't see me doing it, but that is the level of commitment you had. They were here day in, day out. You didn't know who was the boss. You didn't know who was the laborer while this was going on. And I also must commend the authorities of this government. Uh, as I speak, I know if the secretary to the government of the Federation or the minister of FCT or the minister of health or the, uh, any of them, if they come to this facility, they don't need to be taken around. They will take you around just to tell you the number of times they will be here to encourage us to see what was going on, to support us in whichever way they could. And honestly, everybody just did what they needed, what they could do. Those that could lend support at the authority level, did it. Those who could bring resources, did. those who donated time facilities, did. Those who would donate ideas were just so wonderful. And that they did. Speaking before the center was handed over to the Federal Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Federal Capital Territory Administration, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, who conveyed the President's appreciation at the inauguration of the center. The pandemic had brought a reawakening to both the government and the private sector to collaborate in the injection of the much needed investment into the country's healthcare system. Mustafa, who is also the chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, said the disease had totally overwhelmed even the best of health systems in the world, describing it as a powerful notice to all developing nations to wake up. Today, we are witnessing the realization of the synergy with the commissioning of this facility, which is designed to accommodate 300 beds and is scalable to 500. The speed and the commitment demonstrated by the partners that developed this infrastructure is a call to other private sector entities to also get involved in the development of public interest facilities. The PTF advocates strongly that lessons to be drawn from COVID-19 should therefore revolve around development, future planning, consensus building, collaboration and partnerships. Government cannot always do it alone. We must all be involved, Mustafa said. COVID-19 has totally overwhelmed even the best of health systems in the world. And that serves all developing nations a powerful notice to wake up. Today, we are witnessing the realization of the synergy with the commissioning of this facility, which is designed to accommodate 300 beds and is scalable to 500. As the country fights to tame the pandemic and race to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, especially Goal 3, Sahara Foundation is making a difference against COVID-19 and their unique impactful collaboration that involves other key partners including This Day, Arise TV and others is a major step to win this battle. Us in Sahara Group, this is part of our expression of our commitment to the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals, especially Goals 3 and 17. 
As Nigeria continues in its fight to beat the COVID-19 pandemic and by extension to achieve the sustainable development goals, especially goal three, good health and well-being, stakeholders' efforts like this is very welcome and Sahara Group has taken the lead by turning this beautiful structure, remodeling it into an isolation and treatment center for COVID-19 in Nigeria. Even though this day dome is not going to be the same as we know it, but it is expected that as more COVID-19 patients recover from here, it is going to add to Nigeria's win against COVID-19.